Honestly, last night was kind of like crazy. My name is David Shim, executive chef of Coke Korean Steakhouse. And I'm Simon Kim, owner of Coke Korean Steakhouse. Coke is first of its kind. We take Korean barbecues, fun and fire, and then you marry it with American Steakhouse where beef is king. It's a place where you can get lit eating the best beef in the world. When, when I go to my favorite steakhouse, there's a million dollar question, right? What do you want to order? I'm like, you know what? I want it all. You know, and I think that's what Butcher's Feast is. Here, you don't have to choose, you just have it all. We'll start with the filet mignon. When it comes to code, you don't do any cooking. You know, we're gonna do all the cooking. So this cut is our in-house uh, 45 dry aged ribeye. Next is Japanese Wagyu. Right? Miyazaki A5 ribeye. One of the most expensive steaks in the world. This is the highest level of marbling, right? This is literally going to feel like as if you are having a bite of steak with a big bar of butter. This is our uh, marinated short rib. Kabi was it. It's marinated with soy sauce, a lot of fruit and vegetable juices. This is like meat dessert. It has all the charred bits once you cook it correctly. It's sweet, it's flavorful, it's savory, it's super tender. Especially for Koreans, this is like your childhood memory. So last night, we went out with SK, our corporate chef, Wesley Son, our director of hospitality, and Amy is our director of operations. First, we started at Code. A little steak, a little champagne, a little oysters and caviar. Hey, where's the hangover medicine? Yeah, right? Wait, give it to me. I'm going to wash it down with champagne. Let's go. Korea has a pretty amazing hangover chaser arsenal. They're called like Korean pre-hangover pills. You take them before you start to drink, hoping that it coats your stomach and has all the things that you need so that the next morning, you're not waking up into a bashing headache. I feel pretty good. We're gonna have three dinners, and we're gonna drink our ass off and party it off. So think of this as, uh, this is my, the Simon's cheap way of taking out all the dragon slayers yeah. for a night out. Start our night off at Mono Mono. The owner, his name is MJ. He used to be a manager of a nightclub in K-Town. <laughs> He brought this like amazing fried chicken from Korea. Start cooking it out of a nightclub kitchen and it kind of caught a wildfire. That was the kind of like the beginning of Korean fried chicken in New York. It's the master at work. So this is called the Grand Slam. Woo! Yeah. All right, so we, it's called Pado. Pado means wave. wave. So we'll start with one. Oh my god, what? Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everything doing towards me? <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm passing on to you. Pass it. Of everyone here, I'm the one that needs to pace the most because we all remember what happened in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Grand Slam was fun, but also that mushroom soju was pretty crazy. I think that, like, totally got me fucked up. I think that got a lot of people pretty messed up. MJ cannot disclose the ingredients. She's got, um, uh, I mean, mushroom that grows on yeah, so nice. all certain places. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to um, have a special remedy. Just to giggle a lot. Okay, okay. And okay. be a little blue. You did. Good luck at God's game. Good <laughs> 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 All right, the chicken is here. I think it's here. This is super delish. The chicken was just so freaking badass. Picture perfect. It was yeah. glossy. When I dug in, it was hot, crispy. Crunchy. Just so good. We had the mushroom chapche, which is sauteed mushroom with a Korean glass noodle that was pretty awesome. Um, they also had the Napa cabbage chun, which is you know, pan fried with egg wash. But you, you, don't, you don't really see that at restaurants here because tedious and hard to make, and that was superb. You know, yeah. was one of the best dishes I had. And he brought like, like what, eight cocktails of like all different sorts from fennel to mulberry. So in Korea, there's a saying, um, oh. <laughs> which means you're literally blending your soul into your business, yeah. you know? And I think he does a lot of blending, yeah. Thank you. So we're going to Wu's Wonton King. Derek is the owner. He's like the man. He's got such a great character, humble, most awesome guy. Also, the filming date today 
Oh, it's, it's the Chinese special day. Year. It's yeah, Chinese Lunar, 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 Lunar Year here. So it's gonna be wild in that restaurant. All right, how do you say it? Oh. When I walked in, I saw my good friend Kate Crater from Bloomberg, Egg White from uh, Bull Fucking Bomb, Key Lee, Doris Choi. But it's not abnormal. Whenever you go to Wu's Wonton King, industry people all hang out there. So Wu's Wonton King is so freaking awesome. It's a BYOB. This is you. It's like fruit juice that's burning. <laughs> It's very strong, but like it's very fruity. Super high ABV, you know, 53%. That's higher than, you know, distiller's um, proof of uh, um, whiskey. What, what it does is when you're eating fatty, like Chinese food that can be very rich, it actually is like dissipating the heavier flavor. So it really balances it out like nothing else. So happy you're the tiger. Is that yeah. really the tiger? Yeah. I'm That's the tiger, tiger, baby. Best. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, we need some food with that. Oh, please. <laughs> the suckling pig always comes out as a showstopper. They bring it to the table side, they cut the skins, and they put it into the bun with the hoisin sauce, a little bit of cucumber and scallion, I believe, and you know, just stack like little slider burgers, and it's just great. Dude, that skin is like ridiculous. When SK doesn't talk, you know it's a good, good bite. <laughs> King crab, it's a, it's a full experience. First, they bring the, bring out the crab. You hold it, David, you did the... Yeah, you did and the, almost yeah. it escaped because it started going sideways. That's how it Whoa! <laughs> and then they take it to the kitchen, so they cook it three ways. It's perfectly steamed, garlic, scallion, just enough oil. But most importantly, it's like medium rare, you know? It's like as sweet and succulent as it gets. And then, of course, comes the fried. The oh. exterior is like really well seasoned, but when you take a bite, the inside is still that kind of soft succulence and just so delicious. And just when you're like, oh my God, <laughs> that was so amazing, they bring out the fried rice. The rice is here! Fried Hi. rice! Can I get a woo woo? Woo woo! Am I just stoned or is this the best fried rice? I think that's it. I think that's it. Is it, right? I love coming to casual places like this. I can feel the soul and just let loose, you know, just have fun. I think about like the range of service that we give, right? Because as much as we give like Michelin star service and all that stuff, like this conviviality and this just shared dining, we're just shared together rubbing shoulders. That's also what Coat does. And if we just only ate at like Michelin star white hot table restaurants, no offense to them, but like then that's the only thing you deserve to become. I love going to Wu's Wonton King, and it's such a celebration. It's Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year, so it's yeah. pretty awesome. So, I got I got some um, <laughs> red envelopes. I was able to give give it out to all the staff. Dude, that King Crab, like nobody makes King Crab like that. Do you remember when we did Taste of Asia and Derek was there? Yeah. He was like the one vendor who you looked at his menu. Everyone was like, we made one thing. Everyone makes one thing. Derek showed up. He had like 10 dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Derek's so crazy. Yeah. Man. After Wu's Wonton King, we went to Nas 17. Hey. <laughs> oh, oh good. Good. Hello. Hello. Just open and it's a super refined experience. It's a six seat, you know, makase experience. Very intimate. There's no menu. The chef will prepare you what he think is the freshest and uh, most appropriate. And I think we drank more than we drank at Wu's Wonton. It was great food and the, the showmanship of Chef Nas was just beautiful. It's like you get to see a Broadway show, but like one to one in a way. You know, he's the, the way he grabs the rice and like kind of forms it into the nigiri and just super wonderful. Chef Nas is really, he stands out just because, you know, his um, attention to detail and authenticity, you know, is really superb. Yeah, it's also chimney. So, homemade mm -hmm. wow. dry moret fish. Wow, this is hard to make. Wow. Yeah. This is like no joke. Kind of like um, really funky cheese. Yeah, yeah. Salty yeah. cheese. Yeah. You know? so that's what we call the sea parmesan region. How long do you age this for? Three days. Three, Three days? days? Yeah. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Wow. Do you see the Japanese? Just, just, just. Yeah? So that's Maybe my, Japanese. My wife speaks more Japanese. Really? Yeah. She speaks 
quite a bit of Japanese. I was gonna say, did you watch too much Japanese movie or something? Anime, anime. <laughs> <laughs> Nas actually handpicks a lot of plates. How old are the plates? Uh, most the oldest one is in 16th century. Wow. 16th century, yeah. yeah. But we have, for you, later on, we have the Chinese uh, baiju, uh -huh. which is like 60%. Wow. You guys work tomorrow? Yes, everybody works tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's just getting started, guys. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. That, that's how I think. What's, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? We kidnapped the chef. I need to eat more. We're going to go to Undercoat. Great. Undercoat is a um, secretive bar. It's like a dragon's lair <laughs> located underneath coat. We have some great friends at the restaurant industry hanging out, waiting for us to come. So it's going to be a big welcoming party to end the night with the Big Bang. <laughs> we got to Undercoat. Sanjay was making cocktails and there's amazing chefs. Stefano Setsi from Restora. Chef Chintan and Rani from Damaka. David from Peter Luger was there. Yeah. Indian rum came as a cocktail form, and then they opened the grappa from Stefano, and yeah. that's when heavy mixing started. Chef Eric Tran from Palazzo. Yeah. He cooked awesome Vietnamese food. Uh, we got my dad's egg rolls, which I had to bring because this is the, the drunk food. The grilled skewers here, these are made with lemongrass, lamb sausage. Bone marrow with rice dish came out, and then he, then at one point he's like, "Here, everybody have a big bowl of pho," and it just like noodles were flying left and right, and everybody just started grabbing the bowls. They're like, "Okay, we need to wash this down a little bit." Yeah. There he is. A proper night out doesn't end until a proper hangover chaser in the morning. David decided to bring out this awesome soup. You know, hangover girl, veggie uh, gukbap. Super excited. And that's clearly what we needed. It was an epic night. The amount of food, drink. I feel like I've, I've eaten enough <laughs> for like a month, one month worth of food and one month of worth of stimulation, one month worth of, um, you know, engaging with people. So it was really magical.